welcome in this video i am going to describe how to carry out augmented dicky fuller test and phillips perron test all these codes and data will be available in the video link so first of all we have library zoo this is time series package library xts library tidyverse which i call umbrella package based on nine different packages for data manipulation data plot and other things read excel i have data in excel so i need to fork and uh, i need to upload data from excel for which i need read excel library forecast library uh, urca for augmented dq fuller test in detail results and now i am going to basically read my data which is in my data folder uh, read uh, uh, rgdp.xls so this is my data so once you have this data the very first thing is that always inspect your data so what is head of this data so we have these six of the uh, first six observations so data are starting from 1947 1 4 it means it's a quarterly data on uh, rgdp real gdp gdp potential consumption government investment at the moment i am only concerned with rgdp uh, because i am just going to describe how to conduct ADF test and uh, Phillips Perron test. So since you have this data DTTM basically date and time but uh, we don't we just need calendar year so therefore I am going to convert it into date. So now if I see uh, okay it's up to you that whether you want to convert it into extensible time series data or not if you want this code is available if you don't want you can you can even proceed without it. So we have order by date and this is extensible time series date, data which has basically very useful features which we'll uh, discuss later on while doing forecasting. So now we are going to plot this data. This, this is very simple plot, auto plot. And from this plot, what, what do we see here that we have A very clear trend in this data we have a very clear trend in this data so is it trend stationary different stationary that we have to decide conducting unit root tests and all that since we have many variables here if i go to this uh, data xts glimpse to see overview so we have many variables here instead of taking all these variables okay just just a minute uh, data if we take data so you see i am i am only concerned with this date and rgdp so so therefore i am extracting only rgdp so rgdp data dot rgdp that's my data par so basically we are going to have two plots in one column the so first is rows and second is column so first of all let's see how this acf looks like this is acf how pacf looks like this is pacf if you recall uh, the lecture how to identify which model to use and how to decide whether series is stationary or not so from this after first leg, it becomes zero. Mostly my students make a mistake. They think that it's, a, it's AR1 process because this is uh, decaying after leg one. But the necessary requirement is that this ACF should decay geometrically. But it is not decaying geometrically. After 40 quarters, it's still outside plus minus two standard errors. So it's a long memory process. It means the phenomena which happened 40 quarters ago has still its impact on current value so therefore this series is non-stationary from the line plot as well as from acf and pacf plot another very nice way of doing this thing is okay p1 and p2 and uh, you can you can have this uh, this patchwork that's that's very interesting phenomena you can see that you just uh, you can just add these two plots and you will have these side by side p1 plus p2 all codes will be available with you so you can play with this okay let's go and conduct adf and uh, uh, 
Phillips Perron test. So in the first case, we have ADF dot test. This is from forecast packet. ADF dot test. RGDP, that is our series, which we have just displayed. Alternative is stationary and how much, how many legs? So we have, we have uh, uh, truncated legs up to this one. So, and we get ADF test, which indicates that P value is 0 0.677, which means null hypothesis is not rejected. And null hypothesis in this case is always series is non-stationary. So our graph, our ACF and our test is indicating series is non-stationary. So you can print these results. What is Phillips Perron test? PP dot test RGDP. Since I mentioned in my last video clip while unit root testing that in uh, the Phillips Perron test, we assume that errors have, the, 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 there is no assumption on errors serial correlation. So if you there, if you uh, uh, so therefore we don't put lags of dependent variable. So this one and print again. This p value is 0.925. So this shows that null hypothesis non-stationarity is not rejected. So Phillips Perron test and augmented decuplo test both are indicating your series is non-stationary. What is your unit root uh, test? Basically, here we just get value of augmented decuplo test or Phillips Perron test. But this test provides results in detail. So library URCA is used for this one. So you see, in this case, we get in detail results and we have no this lag. Basically, the other variables, these, these are used to make your series, uh, uh, your residuals unautocorrelated. So this T value comes out to be minus 1.77 and it is less than critical value it is greater than critical value so it falls in acceptance region so please watch though that video uh, unit root testing you will get there so it's greater than because your alternative is less than so it means acceptance region is all above all above any value less than critical value will be rejection of null hypothesis null hypothesis series is non-stationary so you fail to reject this null hypothesis. Similarly, you can apply Phillips Perron test and your Phillips Perron test also indicate the same. No, since we have series which is non-stationary at level, so we take its first difference. So we take its first difference. So we have taken the first difference and now we apply augmented DQ Fuller test on first difference. But there, there are some warnings there may be some missing values because due to uh, differencing. So we, we apply NA dot omit uh, 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 difference of LGDP clean and we apply on it. And now if you print this, these results, if you print these results, so this P value is 0 0.01, this Dickey Fuller test is minus 6 point. No, minus 6 is less than minus 3 or minus 3.5, which was your critical value. It's less than. It means null hypothesis is not rejected. Null hypothesis, upper tail is your upper, upper one is accepted. Lower value than critical value will be rejection of null hypothesis. So series seems stationary at first difference. Similarly, we can apply uh, this, uh, 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 this test and this also indicates series is stationary at first difference no let's uh, go and okay you can you can write it in this way same same results i'm going to do it no uh, so let's uh, 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 no let's have your series and its first leg let's have your series and its first leg and we convert it into matrix and do you regress x first x1 on uh, uh, all the variables except the first variable so if you, okay, the, the best way is always inspect your data. X head. No. So you have, no, this, this, is, this is your first value and it is the first leg. It is the first leg. 0 0.015, its leg is here. So you are regressing series on its own leg and you have linear model, summary of LM2. Now we want to see Basically, we want to see whether your residuals are correlated or not. If residuals are correlated, it means you need to put more legs and it means your model is not correct. So therefore, I am going to plot the series, residuals plot, 
and okay this is your residual plot this is your acf of the residuals this is pacf of the residuals so these acf and pacf and residual series seems behaving properly so it means series seems okay fine it's fine similarly now you need to identify that once your series is stationary your dl gdp clean is stationary what type of arma model a r i m a i is one here so what a r i m a i should use so from this plot again we 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 are now using the different series and uh, this is this is after three legs it becomes after two legs it becomes zero and pacf becomes uh, zero after first leg so if i take it like this way so in a way no if i assume that this is decaying geometrically and this after first leg becomes zero residuals are properly behaved so you may try ar1 model on different series you may try a ma1 ma2 mod ma1 so this ma1 and ma2 on this series or you may have to go with the first leg second leg you may try ar ma1 one so these are two three models which you will try and then you will see which one is the best candidate model and that will also keep on discussing our uh, coming videos uh, stay in touch. So here I have just mentioned how to carry out Dickey Fuller test, augmented Dickey Fuller test, Phillips Perron test, and once you take the difference, then how you identify your model. So finally, if I have to come up with this one A R I M A model, so I will say if A R one. So since I have taken the first difference, so I will say this one. So after taking the difference, it's this one. If I, I don't need to take the difference, then I is 0. Then this I will be 0. So this is how you conduct unit root test and then you identify the model. I hope it will help you. Thank you for watching. Take care.